Hello and welcome to Video Revealed. I'm Colin Smith. This is not a full episode. This is just showing you how I created the fire in the episode for the firefighter public service announcement. Okay, so this episode is not about fluid dynamics, 3D creating simulated fire. It's about opportunities. It's about taking advantage of what was right in front of me. Let's just look at the scene here. So the firefighters are there. They're fighting the fire on the right hand side. And I showed this in my previous tutorial um, and told you that I would show you how I got the fire. Well, I'm gonna turn off the fire and show you what I had. So that is the firefighters spraying water on the building and it wasn't on fire. So let me set the scene for you. Uh, this public service uh, project was shot over two days. The first day was the setup and the arrival of the firefighters. The next day was the actual burning of the barn. And what I did was take the footage from the second day and put it into the first day. And before I show you that, I just want to tell you how, how an opportunity is important and what a visual effects supervisor would do that I didn't do. I'm not a visual effects super supervisor. A visual effects supervisor will ask a lot of questions and uh, basically have a plan. And you can't expect firefighters who aren't visual effects experts to know everything they want. You have to ask them questions, which I didn't. I should have asked them, are you going to be spraying the building? Yes. Do you want it to look like the building is on fire? Yes. Then I would have planned things different. I was more uh, concentrating on the rest of the day and, and that one critical element I missed. It came up when I showed them that particular uh, ending of the clip where they're spraying the building and there's no fire, at, to which they said, it kind of looks stupid, there's no fire. <laughs> and in my brain, I thought, well, shouldn't you have told me you wanted fire? No, they shouldn't, I should have asked. So they wanted fire, you have two options. One is create simulated fire. And the only way to do that accurately is with fluid dynamics and 3D, not fake particles. Forget it. I don't care how good a particle system is. It's going to look like crap. Fluid dynamics is real three-dimensional fluid dynamics. I'll show you an example here. And it can look exactly like fire. It can look like explosions, but that's beyond me. I'm not interested in taking 20 hours to figure that out to do it. So I, th I was looking through my clips and I'll show you what I found. I had this clip here on the second day of the building on fire. And when I was looking at this clip over here, I thought the scale was pretty close. And because most of the building was obscured on the right hand side, I wouldn't have to count on anything other than the left-hand side of the building. So sure enough, when I scooted that over and put it in there, it worked. But I had a problem. Have a look at the, at the beginning of this clip, and you'll see what my problem is. You see that there's a lot of movement in this clip. So I had to find a place where was, there was the least amount of movement, but you can still see a little bit of movement in there. This particular camera was on the end of a dolly on a on a sorry on a jib. That's not the best a jib. It's a, well any jib is never going to be solid crane jib what have you, and that it just moved a little bit while it was stuck out there. So I had to bring this in and run the warp stabilizer on this. So let me open up 
and turn this on. Okay, so let's turn everything off and I'll show you no warp stabilizer and no mask. So I brought the clip in and just moved it over here and you can see the clip is moving. Okay. The whole clip is here. I brought it up and lined that up. And then I drew a mask on here. Now, if you want to be picky, if we look at this a little bit closer, the smoke ends a little bit too quickly. Honestly, this is a one and a half second, two second clip. I wasn't about to follow the smoke around in here. Um, the final result blew the firefighters away. The, I didn't tell them what I was doing. I just heard them from the first day where they said, where's the fire? And then the next time they watched it, there was a fire and they were happy. Remember, these guys are, are fighting fires all the time. So they know what a fire looks like. Um, a visual effects supervisor would probably look at that smoke and say, why is that ending too quick before it goes to the, the blue sky? For them, it didn't matter. So you have to weigh this. Is, a, is this a Hollywood production? No, it's a public service uh, production where the end of that smoke doesn't mean anything to anybody. So a little bit of a feather on, on the mask and it works. And then I had to run the warp stabilizer on here to, to and if, if I turn the warp stabilizer off and play this, watch how much that building slips. See that? See it's moving around because the jib was moving around. Now what's important here with the warp stabilizer is changing this to no motion instead of smooth motion. The default setting for the warp stabilizer, both in After Effects and in Premiere Pro, is to smooth the motion. So if somebody's walking with a camera, it will smooth the motion. In my case, I want no motion. This is a really good technique to use when you want something to look like it's on a, um, a tripod and you didn't have a tripod. You lock your arms off and you keep it as solid as possible, but there's still that little waiver, warp stabilizer, no motion, a mask in here, and then before you know it, I have got my fire in there. Now let's zoom in. And I'll turn that off and I'll turn that on. Look at this. There is no way you're going to get that charred wood with a particle system. No way, not at all. The only reason this worked and the only reason it worked so easily is because I happen to luckily have another clip with the fire in it. So if I was to do this again, what would I do? I would make sure I marked off an area on the ground where the tripod was. I would have measured the height of the camera up to the lens so I could recreate that fire shot the second day shoot it with them spraying the building. The next day when they're setting it on fire, lock that camera down in the exact same position. And you know what? Even if it was off a little bit, I could still scooch that around. And yes, that's the technical term. I could scooch that around a little bit on, as I brought the clip in and, and, and place it in the same way. Um, the other thing I didn't know that again, they didn't tell me, and this is about location shooting. This was a public event, so they actually invited the press and people down for the barn burn. And what I found when, our, when I arrived the second day, a whole area was cordoned off. And there was a place that I had my camera in the first day that wasn't even available. It's where they had uh, the public, it, being able to stand. So I couldn't even place my camera. So as a good uh, visual effects coordinator, I would have confirmed the location of the camera on two days. And hopefully they would have realized that and said, oh yeah, by the way, when we burn this, you can't put your camera here. Well, if I can't put my camera here, I'm not gonna set the camera up here. You gotta ask all these questions. It's almost like magically know all the things that, that are gonna happen beforehand. Um, and if you're lucky enough, like I was, then you're able to take something from one clip, bring it into another, and make these guys unbelievably happy like they were actually fighting a fire instead of, instead of spraying water on a dry building.
All right, so there you go. Not a full episode, but just uh, an idea. I thought I would insert this because uh, I teased everybody before and uh, said that I'll show you how I did the fire. I know some people probably thought particle systems, after effects, particular, eh, eh. You don't get charred wood with particles. All right, hopefully you found this informative. If you think like things like this are uh, worthwhile, then maybe you can support us over on um, Patreon. Uh, make sure you subscribe to us. And until next time, I'm Colin Smith, and it's my job to get you and your fire looking the best. <laughs>